Hey everyone, welcome to our panel discussion uh, called Show Me the Money, uh, Trends in FinTech designed to help independent artists and labels. All right, so I guess we can start off by introducing ourselves. Um, all right, so I guess I'll start. I will be your moderator for the next uh, 45-ish minutes. My name is Sarah Weefald. I'm a senior product manager at STEM Disintermedia. At STEM, we do digital distribution um, we make uh, consistent and transparent payments using splits, uh, including recoupment. Um, we do access to funding um, while people keep creative control and ownership and um, financial tools as well for uh, independent artists and labels. And uh, let's toss it over to Peter. Hi, my name is Peter Sinclair. Um, uh, I am the founder of Beatbread. We are a funding platform for independent artists and independent labels. Um, we are not a distributor, we are not a label, and we don't provide any services at all. Um, our philosophy is that we provide artists with choice and funding that allows them to choose their own terms and maintain independence, and then pick the right distributors, services companies, uh, et cetera, that are right for them. Awesome. Great, thanks. And, uh, I'm, uh, I'm John Wapsh. I am the co-founder of Nerve. And uh, what Nerve is, is a banking app for music creators, specifically for your, your businesses. Um, and uh, uh, we, in kind of a similar vein, we believe very strongly in uh, uh, independent artists and believe that you should uh, have uh, economic inclusion. And um, for the most part, uh, artists have been left outside of the financial world. Um, and, uh, and so our goal is to enable you. We help you get an account inside of about 45 seconds. It's all free. Uh, it's done all within your, within our app. And, um, uh, and I'm excited for today's chat prior to, uh, prior to founding nerve, I uh, spent the last 18 years or so in FinTech. So, I'm excited about this discussion. I love it uh, and excited uh, uh, what FinTech is going to be doing and currently doing for our community. Awesome, thank you. Thank you both. All right, so I know we're all on the same page wanting to make sure that, that independent artists and labels stay supported and so that they can stay independent. Um, and I think, you know, just sort of a general outcome that we're hoping for for everybody coming out of this conversation is that everyone who's, who's joined us today is going to be equipped with new knowledge uh, to be able to use the various trends and things happening in fintech to be able to stay independent. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I know, like, you know, John, you've got a lot of experience in fintech. Um, I've, I've kind of split my time between being in the music industry, working at like Caroline Distribution. Um, all right, you well, know, no, Caroline Distribution is still around, but EMI, you know. Um, and then I started working for software companies. So I'm kind of like, you know, seeing, seeing both ends of it. Um, you know, it's good to be back with the music industry, working with artists again. Um, so, I mean, I, I think everybody here kind of knows, but let's like, let's, let's put it all on the table. Like, what are the things that independent artists and labels are like want and what do they not want when it comes to, you know, all of the, the financial stuff and, and businesses and just operating in general in this, in this world. Yeah. Well, I, I can sort of weigh in, uh, you know, my perspective, just from what we've seen um, uh, with the artists that we speak to and the labels we speak to, and then um, uh, sort of what is out there in, in the research. And I let you guys, uh, you know, speak as well. I think primarily what we see is that artists uh, need funding for their next project. Um, and, um, and they want choice. Um, they want to be able to choose different structures, um, and really, you know, have, have some control over, you know, what the terms are and not have it be a one-sided negotiation, um, which I think is typical for the legacy music industry. Um, I think they want choices also over their services, you know, um, a one-size-fits-all model of promotion, streaming, you know, uh, plugging, all of those things isn't right for everyone. You know, every artist is uh, unique and often, um, you know, labels have one team that does that 
And so I think in our experience, artists really want to choose that. There's interesting uh, research from um, uh, uh, Mark Mulligan in, in Medea um, and also the RIAA, um, the Recorded Music Industry Association that we always look at. And if you look back six or seven years ago, over 70% of artists thought a record deal was essential to their career. And now um, over 70% of artists don't think that it's essential. It's not to say that a record deal isn't right for some artists, but it's no longer the must have thing. And that's true even if you talk to signed artists. Um, so we just think artists need access to resources and they need a cho choice and then they can figure out what's right for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the uh, um, you know certainly choice choice is a big driver. I mean, what what kind of underpins it, and perhaps it's a uh, uh, hopefully it's not semantics, but um, you know the the uh, the availability of the insight and the data um, that uh, that that fundamentally should drive an artist's career is um is what ultimately enables choice right and so so I, that's that's one of the things that excites me about um about just fintech and music uh colliding in a very real way is is the um the availability of the data um uh, that that an artist can use to make whether it's uh judgments about their own income or what they're going to spend on their next what they should spend on their next project um or it's um, um the actual uh, really interesting things that certainly we've been seeing lately in regards to uh, NFTs and um, and how artists can use that to uh, create new sources of income and engage uh, more closely with fan base. Um, you know what what we've um, what certainly I mean drove drove nerve uh, drove us to create nerve was was the very unfortunate reality that that we were hearing over and over again from creators all around music which uh which was it's too damn hard to get a a, a bank account from a business um you know banks for the most part even those that are focused on entertainment um tend to uh uh tend to have uh, a lot of obstacles that they put in the way of of um of an of an artist if they're not um they're not at a, a certain revenue level or, or something else or you know they require at five thousand dollars to be on a deposit before you, use, you know, otherwise you have to pay each month you have to have fees for your account or there's a lot of paperwork required and i didn't you know for whatever reason maybe my band isn't incorporated or whatever the, the you know we don't have an llc around it yet or whatever the case may be and all of these obstacles um uh um uh, unfortunately really really hurt musicians um uh when it comes time to actually accessing other aspects whether it's borrowing money uh to your point peter or it's uh or it's you know just um uh just engaging with their taxes which is never fun for anybody but um uh you know it's one of those necessary things um if all of that data and accessibility to um to your uh, to your finances is is not easy, uh, or it's perhaps disparate, um, creates fundamental challenges and creates challenges at a band level because band members kind of argue over well only one person can see the account or um, you know why is it all in your Venmo and <laughs> and we're not able to see it um, and, you know or, or the group uh, you know there's some infighting there do we really spend that much money on gas um, and you know it, it's a, so there's all these like you know these this consternation that that we saw and heard and that's that's ultimately the the reaction for you know why we felt we needed to build um a, a bank that was specifically attenuated towards towards this towards the community but um but yeah you're right i mean it is it is fundamentally about um about those drivers that 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 give you the the empowerment uh to to guide your career forward yeah, absolutely. And I think you both have touched on something really important and that I know is near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, so Meek Mill tweeted on October 25th, and I'm, I'm reading this off of a complex article because he's, he's, deleted, his, he's, he's deleted his entire account. Um, but you know, he, he tweeted in part, I haven't got paid from music and I don't know how much money m labels make off of me. I need lawyers ASAP. 
Um, and I know, you know, for, for those of us who've been working with artists for a long time, you know, it's, uh, it's not an uncommon feeling, right? And I think you've both described how a lot of artists feel like they're in the dark, um, you know, and I, I know that throughout music history, and this might be a little controversial to say, but, you know, there, there certainly have been examples of when artists have signed really bad deals, right? And, and the label has not, not necessarily done right by their artist. Um, but I think there's also instances where both parties are coming into it with the best of intentions. And there's, it's just really difficult to make all of these incredibly complicated accounting, uh, you know, artifacts and, and everything just visible to everybody, mm -hmm. you know? Because you know, usually working with like one person in the band is the main point of contact for the manager. Then the manager is the main point of contact for the label. But then like the label is also interfacing with the business manager. And then the, the information just isn't in one place where everyone can see it. Um, We're so, starting to see that change though, right? I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, you, you definitely, there's, there's, there's any number of, uh, of companies that are, that are, currently and perhaps over the last couple of years been been endeavoring to create uh, a variety of things related to you know whether it's smart con it's usually smart contract related uh, um, uh, blockchain enabled um, transparency for all sort of uh, initiatives now how, how how quickly that world becomes the the norm um, you know be be interesting to watch, but it is fun to kind of see these things sort of seep into the consciousness of um, of hopefully where we're headed. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And I know Sarah, you know, you and I hadn't talked about this, but you know, you guys have payment splitting and 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 you know, provide that transparency. And I think that that's great. Um, you know, there's a lot to unpack there in his tweet, right? Uh, there's a lot yeah. of ideas in in a in I guess we're now more than 140 characters. I'm dating myself, but. Um, uh, you know, there's the issue of transparency, which is a big deal. I think the other issue is just is ownership, right? So it may be that if he saw all those numbers, he would still not be entitled to be paid at all. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not taking a side here. Um, but in addition to transparency, it's just a fundamentally an ownership question. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, is five or six years ago, the music business had to be one where artists signed away their ownership forever because you had physical distribution and all these other things that were, it was a very narrow pipe of a small number of superstars who could make a living on their music and the costs of making and distributing music were very high. Now the costs of making and distributing music are not high. So you don't need someone to sort of get that one in a hundred chance of making a thousand times their money to back you. Um, uh, to, to, to front all of those costs. And there's a lot more room to make a living in music than there ever was before. Um, there are probably 50 or, or 100,000 artists who can make a living on their music. You know, I think the, the stat from Spotify was 14,000, but I think we all know that Spotify is not the only uh, 14,000 artists who make more than $50,000 a year was the latest stat from Spotify. But Spotify is only, you know, 40% of the global streaming pie and there's other revenue streams as well. So um, there's just so much more room for artists to make a living and the music industry doesn't have to take ownership of music forever in order to finance artists anymore. Um, and that, that's, that's only a five-year change um, and it's going to accelerate. But I think that's the other, the other piece of that is in addition to transparency, which absolutely is essential. And I think you guys are both on to something there, um, but ownership just is not a necessity anymore. And it, and it, it used to be, but it's not anymore. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And even, you know, like you, you mentioned, you know, at, uh, at the start, I think we were all sort of talking about choice and how important choice is and how people really need flexible options. And I think, you know, that, you know, is, is one of those things where it's like, it can open up your entire world, right? Like you're no longer sort of beholden to like this one thing. Um, right. But then of course, you know, like there can be additional challenges that come along with that, right? Because, you know, it's, I mean, yes, we want everyone to have as much flexibility and choice as they possibly need. Um, but then, you know, there's sometimes also the, the danger of like, well, if, if my data is living in multiple different places, then how do we get it all back into one, into one spot? Um, yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, like, 
that you know that's something that that we think about a lot at STEM. You know, like as you know, as a, as a member of the product team, we're like, okay, like, you know, yes, we we do distribution. Um, but you know, like Peter, as you were mentioning, like people want to be able to to choose different distributors as well. Yeah. You know, so how do we help people get all of that data in one place, regardless of who they're using for distribution? Um, yeah, these are all yeah, these are all things that we're thinking about all the time. Um, so. All right, so I think we've, you know, we've we've uh, unearthed some of the things that are sort of getting in the way of of artists and 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 labels um, being able to have the kind of experience that they're that they're looking to have. Um, so what, you know, get, getting to the title of our panel discussion here, what are some of the trends that we're seeing right now uh, that independent labels and artists can start taking advantage of? John, you uh, want to start? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I, I uh, obviously, I mean, we, we can back off of the NFT stuff that I was mentioning earlier. I mean, that, you know, that's still so nascent. Um, but the most common, like, fundamental trend, and, you know, you see it obviously with Peter, see with, with, with STEM as well. I mean, whether it's beet bread, STEM, it, it, all over the place, it, it's about accessibility to uh, and, 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 and choice, right? So it's, it's however you want to say it, it's, it's, it's you know, now, you know, you can go do these things thanks to the enablement of technology and and the bright minds that that are kind of stitching these opportunities together. Um, and so, so I think fundamentally, the, the probably the most base thing that we're seeing due to um, the emergence of fintech and music is accessibility uh, of um, whether it's product selection or distribution or it's um, uh, uh, the ability to, um, or, you know, as we talked about driving insights from your own data, um, that, that help you make, uh, smart decisions, or it's, um, the accessibility of, uh, of, um, of paying your, uh, your bandmates or paying your, um, uh, you know, your artists, like, you know, what, like I've got a session musician, I need to pay that guitarist, um, you know, and I want to, I want to pay them without getting hit with, uh, I want to pay them instantly. I need to pay them instantly. I want to get, pay them without getting hit with fees. And I want to be able to make sure that I don't have to chase that person around at the end of the year with a W9 situation. Right. And so, um, it's, so those types of things are things that we just kind of embed into, like, for instance, the nerve, our, our, our product, you know, we, uh, we make that just really easy. So if somebody has a nerve account, you can pay them instantly. You can hit a little button, and 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 now we've got pre-populated form for you uh, for taxes. And so, you know, these types of, of things are all these these are all just enablement um, vehicles that are now uh, available to, to to everyone. And it is deeply exciting um, uh, when when you think to your point, Peter, that just five or six years ago, the world may have looked quite a bit different, and maybe five years before that. I mean, I can't tell you how many artists I talked to who were, you know, performing in the year 2000. They said back then we had two streams of revenue, like that, that was it. And uh, and now there's, you know, I've, I've got ten. They might not necessarily be huge streams, but there's there's a lot of them. And so, you know, that's that's really awesome. The optionality is there, and the uh, the ability to kind of um, get paid in so many ways, managing that money and and making sure that you're taking care of it is is important. Um, but uh, uh, but that's a positive problem to have. I agree with, with everything that John said. And I think that um, in a world where there's more revenue streams, there's more artists that can make a living um, uh, and there's more choice for artists, um, there's a lot of technology solutions like STEMs and, 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 and like NERVs and, and others to help keep managers organized. But I think in addition to the technology of it all, the manager is becoming ever more important in an artist's business. Um, the label and the business manager and a couple other providers used to be essential in taking on some roles that I think increasingly you're going to see the manager take a, a more central role and maybe replace some of the functions for some artists anyway that a label may have done traditionally. Um, obviously, they're going to need tools to do that, but I think we are very much seeing um, uh, managers and independent labels play a larger role and the majors playing a smaller role, um, you know, if you flash forward five and 10 years. There's, you know, if uh, that's, that's an interesting perspective and um, certainly uh, 
Um, I, I normally like panels where we don't all agree with each other, but right now, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not agree with it. I'll try to come up with a uh, something. Yeah, I'll probably be disagreeable if you want. <laughs> uh, I, um, uh, I I do have to say that there's you know the the uh, just to take it back to like I, I, I the digital currency um, phenomenon that's 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 really fundamentally changed a lot of um, you know give, I guess it's an accessibility um, question as well, but digital currency. Um, enable all sorts of really interesting things for artists who who either travel or based in um you know latin america or uh you know obviously you know where you bounce between countries or different fiat currencies quite regularly and um and you know there's there's any number of problems that exist with that the most obvious is like the cost of fx <laughs> foreign exchange uh uh fees and everything else that that end up kind of piling up both for the the company that pays the artist as well as the artist um, herself, and 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 so, uh, it's so I, I think that there's a, there's definitely a lot there. Um, we uh, uh, you know on on the front end with Nerve, we 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 obviously are this banking product, um, but the reason why we're able to offer it for free is because we make money somewhere else. We make money by partnering with companies to help them alleviate their expense for actually paying artists, and so it's so because most artists don't have. Uh, 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 business banking accounts, what ends up happening is they tend to have Venmo, PayPal, um, things that are payment apps that, that, that seemingly are, are nice, but they end up costing a lot of money to the companies that actually pay those artists. And so, and so what we do is we, we dramatically reduce those fees. And, um, and I, you know, that's just the very start of what you're going to see across the board in paying musicians uh, globally. There's going to be a, a a a really strong reduction in fees of compression in in, in that structure um, uh, over the next uh, couple of years due to things like Lightning Network and a variety of other like digital uh, currency uh, tools and and what that what that what that ultimately hopefully means is more money in an artist pocket or more in our case free tools that otherwise would not be available to the artist because they're paid for in a in a way that's that's you know absent of maybe that um uh um you know in other words that artist does, doesn't have to pay for them right they come from somewhere else in the system and so uh so i think you know starting to see that um uh and, and in the the one that's that's been the hot button in fintech for for the last number of years has been this idea of embedded embedded fintech where ecosystems themselves that are already pre-existing can um can embed uh uh different fintech related things for their ecosystem so a really simple example is commonly cited is like if you're an uber driver um the vast majority of uber drivers never had actual access to the u.s banking system and in many ways were excluded and so uber became uh, almost overnight, like the fastest issuing, uh, um, if you want to think of them as a bank, but bank, uh, bank uh, a generator of, of accounts for their Uber drivers, right? And so they embedded this, um, they embedded the, the, uh, the ability to open the accounts and everything else inside of their own app um, uh, for drivers. And, and, you know, we, we, we absolutely see the world the same way, like working with various companies in the space um, to allow their artists to uh, not just be able to um, uh, 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 receive these payments cheaply or faster, it's also to allow them to maybe see their money um, inside of other uh, labels or, 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 you know, name your distributors apps, uh, other, other companies apps in the infrastructure. And so, so all that's going to do is increase, you know, we talked about transparency earlier, increase the transparency and that, that availability. So an artist is able to get additional tools sort of baked in by other product teams, like STEM's product team can now use um, a broader sort of financial suite that maybe they wouldn't have access to um, because of financial technology. So I think we're going to see more and more of this stuff over the next few years. I mean, STEM is also contributing to that financial tooling as well. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't mean to knock <laughs> that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, uh, 
I think that's really, I, yeah, I think you guys have all brought up really interesting points. I do eventually want to get back to what Peter was saying about the role of the manager in, in all of this as well. Um, but I just one thing I just kind of sounds like is like a recurring theme um, and, you know, kind of a recurring theme even from, from what all of our companies do is, you know, the, the um, different ways that independent artists and labels can access capital, you know, and, and being able to do that in ways that don't involve having to um, give up any sort of creative control uh, without having to give up any ownership even, um, you know, just getting the, the capital that you need to be able to invest in your business, whether you're an artist or a label. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, having your cake and eating it too, um, which I'm really excited about, you know, and I know, um, you know, we, we all have, uh, you know, different ways that we're, that we're providing that. Um, I will. And, I there, mean, and I, there are other people in the space as well. There are so many different types. The only ones. Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, we, we don't provide liquidity to the artists. So, so, you know, we, 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 we work with companies that do that um, or, you know, that's, uh, uh, but, but that is a, um, but you could imagine like, for instance, there's, there's any number of really interesting uh, products, of course, outside of uh, our own that are enabling all sorts of, um, you know, Hey, you can buy into the future, uh, revenue stream of a, a song these days if you're just a, um, an average Joe and you want to support an artist um, and uh, I think that is called is that called Zest is that what that is um, is that the name of the product I, I can't uh, I think it's Vest. Vest 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 that's it yep um, anyway, so there's, there, there, there are these, there are a number of different models that are, that are, that are coming out for, you know, additional ways to monetize. And, um, it's really interesting to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, cause I know John, you had also mentioned, you know, NFTs and, and the, you know, sort of like crypto decentralized, um, you know, banking, uh, you know, the, some of the, some of this, tr uh, technology that we're seeing emerge, it's still very early, you know, kind of can be hard to tell exactly how it's all going to shake out. But of course, you know, I entered the music industry in 2006. Uh, so it was a, a time of great change. <laughs> um, you know, so I've seen everything, I've seen everything turn on its head before. I'm sure it'll happen again in our lifetime. Um, but um, I mean, and there are other, you know, uh, you know, some companies in, the, in that space even um, that are starting to to pick up, I mean, there's, you know, just, I mean, full disclosure, STEM has partnered with Royal.io um, to provide data for what they're doing, you know, which is um, they're allowing fans to be able to purchase shares, uh, you know, to invest in directly uh, so particular songs by some of their favorite artists, uh, which I think is a, a really interesting way to, to also approach, you know, the, the different sources of funding that are available to folks these days. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think um, there's no question that the crypto and NFT space is going to have a big role to play. Um, I think it's still early days. Um, I think, you know, for artists, it's important to think about, even if it's a new technology, are you giving up ownership or not? Um, and it's okay if you want to, and you are making that choice consciously, but I think... Um, what's forgotten in some of these conversations is that there is a sale in perpetuity where you get into some of the issues that Meek Mill's talking about, um, where if they take off, uh, they're not going to see any of that money. Um, I, I think that's sort of one thing for, for folks to keep in mind. Um, you know, I think, um, yeah, so but, but that said, I do think that crypto has, has a pretty interesting uh, role to play. Um, and it's just important for artists to keep in mind, you know, is this a technology which is fundamentally created to empower artists? Or is this a technology that investors in Silicon Valley think is an interesting asset class to exploit? And um, it's an it's an important point of emphasis. And there's, you know, obviously investors need to make money as well. But um, I think there are companies whose fundamental outlook is about empowering artists, and there are companies whose fundamental outlook is about um, exploiting an asset class. And if I'm a manager, I want to be a little circumspect of the latter. Yeah, yeah. And I think, and kind of, you know, now coming, coming back to managers, um, yeah. you know, it's just something that struck me. I mean, in, in no small part, because my, my partner is an artist manager. Um, I've also worked for, artist, uh, for an artist manager. Um, you know, there's the, the breadth 
of, of involvement that the typical manager has in a day, right? Because not only are you helping to negotiate all of the contracts, make sure that, you know, everything is moving along smoothly, making sure everyone's getting out on the road, uh, making sure that everything continues to move smoothly when you're on the road. Um, but then there's also all of this techno technological stuff happening kind of all alongside of it. And, you know, I, I mean, I've, you know, managers get, you know, the business phone calls all the time, but then they also get, you know, the, hey, like, you know, from their artists, I just need support right now because like the going is tough, um, you know, and just having to wear so many different hats. And then meanwhile, all of this technology is, <laughs> you know, happening at a more and more accelerated pace. Um, so I'm just like, you know, wondering, cause I mean, clearly, you know, we're, we're talking about managers, labels, and artists sort of all working in harmony, you know, making sure that everybody has the information that they need, the right level of transparency, because you don't want to overwhelm people with data, because when you've overwhelmed people, then I mean, it's like, it's not, it's no longer actionable, right? right. Um, so like, I, I'm, I'm looking maybe like, what are some ways that we can, you know, just sort of, I mean, I'm, I'm not thinking that we're going to solve all the problems of the music industry in the next 10 minutes, right? But um, what are some of the ways that, you know, we can help this uh, harmonious coexistence happen? Wow, it's a big question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's just solve, let's just solve everybody's problems right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I think your point about the sort of um, player coach and um, ear in the sort of, you know, being an artist is probably the hardest job in the world, right? And the, the role of a manager that's always been the role of the manager is sort of being a confidant and helping uh, the artist maybe realize strengths that they've forgotten about themselves and manage the chaos of the road and all of those things. I think those, those are constants and remain constants. I think um, what the industry needs to do, I think a better job of, it's starting to do, is give managers the tools to manage the business and the promotion more than that they will. And, and by the way, not every manager wants to take on that role and they can find a label partner, an independent label partner, as our view is probably a better bet, but not always, not for everyone. There, listen, there are folks, I worked in the label system for a bit and there's some people there that I think are the absolute best in the world at what they do um, for, the, for the right artist. Um, but I think giving managers the tools to play that promotional and label and more commercial role, at least for some managers and some artists, is what artists want and what is now possible. So whether that is, you guys said, you know, reporting and transparency, whether that's access to capital, um, um, you know, whether that's, you know, more extensive, you know, traditional PR and promotion, right? That the label uh, that the label traditionally played. Um, it may be that, you know, there are great tools that will match an artist with the providers who provide those services over time. Um, I've seen a few different versions of that in the market. I don't think anyone's really hit it yet, um, but that's something that we think is potentially interesting. Um, so um, that we would love to see someone else do, not, not ourselves. So um, um, anyway, so I don't know. Um, you, it's a big question. I don't know if that was a, a, a perfect answer, but sort of that's, that's my view. No, yeah, I, I, I like I, that I a lot. When you, when you align, anytime you align this incentives, uh, you know, amongst three different groups, you'll, you'll come up with the right solutions. Um, and so, so you, you, I mean, you're absolutely right. So like overwhelming of, <laughs> uh, overwhelming someone with data is never, or anybody with data is never really the right idea, right? It's about the insights that you can drive from it. Um, and, and are those actionable, um, that, that really, you know, kind of into, but, but that actionable insight, I think in many ways can also help, um, uh, the, the three parties coexist in, in ways that, um, that maybe are not, uh, are not seen today. And I, I don't know exactly what that looks like. I just, uh, you know, just, I, I think, because quite frankly, you just sprung the idea on me. Uh, so, <laughs> But, but it is interesting, and to Peter's point, I don't think we're the company to solve that problem either, but 
<laughs> but there's a, um, but, but, you know, that I would, I would always, I would always like to, um, I, I would like to think that, um, that no matter where you sit in the, uh, in the music space today, um, I like to think that, um, that you embrace, you, you, you have started to, if you don't already embrace the idea that, um, that the world has changed. It's not changing. Um, it, it fundamentally changed. <laughs> like the last decade, stuff changed. And, uh, and, and that's a, and, 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 you know, you can have two, one of two reactions to it, right? You can either you can either uh, panic and and close your eyes, or you can say, well, you know, let's 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 change with it. And um, and I've seen a lot of really interesting, um, uh, not new companies, incumbents, uh, uh, make some really really interesting um, uh, improvements over the last uh, few years. So I think it'll be really interesting to watch these three parties uh, come together due to, um, you know, the fact that the world did change. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a really good point to remember, right? Because I, I mean, I remember very clearly, uh, you know, there was, there did not used to be uh, so much embracing of, of the change happening in our world, uh, and especially in the music industry early on. Um, some people uh, embrace that change more than others. Um, and, you know, history has demonstrated that, you know, that's, that seems to be the way that that works. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I started taking, I, I mean, I started working in software um, in the, in the early 2010s. Um, and I wasn't sure I would ever really be able to come back to the music industry. I just thought like, well, you know, the world has changed and I'm changing too, and we'll see what happens. And then Lo and behold, I found a way to work in software and the music industry at the same time. Um, Great. Yeah, I think just being, yeah, having having that flexibility, I think, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it also goes back to everything we were saying about choice, right? Because um, when you when you have I mean, choices, well, actually, let me, let me reverse that. Power seems to come from choice, yes. right? Um, your power is always do I do this or do I do that? And, you know, sometimes, sure, your choices might be a little limited. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes your choice is, do I accept the situation or do I reject it? But even making that choice, like, let's say, you know, I, I reject this system where the only way I can get funding is, you know, to sign all of my creative control away. Um, then that opens up a whole other world to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, I think that's right. And listen, I think, you know, um, there more, I think, you know, not the world has changed. I totally agree, John. Uh, the, I think when we say the world is changing, it's going to change even more than it has. Um, I think <laughs> what we're all saying. And, um, you know, uh, I do think that, you know, the major labels and that they will continue to have a role as well. Right. And I think, um, you know, we've had, many artists uh, get advances from us and use the money well. And guess what? Uh, they go on and they sign a label deal later. And that's okay, right? The point is, is the terms that they got to your point, uh, Sarah, about power, they were not empowered when they took money from us vis-a-vis -vis the label. They, they knew that's where they were headed but they were able to hold out a bit longer with some new choices in the market, grow their business, and then get a significantly, uh, you know, more money on better terms uh, than they would have had otherwise. And I think that that increasingly is going to become the norm. Um, and so it's really exciting. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point too, right? Like the systems of the industry that we're talking about, they all came about for a reason, yep. you know, and they, and they haven't gone away for a reason. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but like being able to find those ways uh, where we can provide that empowerment um, to be able to give people the types of actionable insights that they need, um, you know, to just, you know, like I, I know that that's like a huge source of pride for me to be able to provide these sort of trailblazing tools that empower artists and labels. Uh, I know that that's the case for the both of you as well. Um, so well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both so much. I've really, really enjoyed getting to talk with you all today. Um, and I want to thank you especially for being the moderator. 
Um, uh, you know, uh, as Larry David would say, it's, it takes special skill to middle at a dinner party. So uh, well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you, Sarah. Bye. Thanks, guys.